Hey folks, Mal4 on here. Welcome back to another great Eminence Dev Diary. Today we're on to number 11, which is all about titles. Now this is regarding titles in the sense of countries rather than people um, for the most part. And it's just going to go over like how titles are going to work. And uh, there's some really cool, interesting things in it this week. So uh, we're just going to get into it and yeah, see what they have to say. So here we go. Yeah, today's topic is titles, one of the defining features of every country. Titles contain a lot of important information about a country, like its name, map color, which is always important. You've got to have a good map color in a, in a strategy game, uh, rank, type, and flag. More importantly, titles are also key components in reforming existing countries or creating new ones, although we'll get into that in a bit. I don't think they cover that exactly in this one. I think it will be in a future dev diary. Uh, increasing the rank of a country or claiming a more powerful title is one of the more visible manifestations of progress in grey eminence. So knowing how titles work is important to success. So name, the most basic feature of every title is its name, which is a collection of noun, adjective, prefix or suffix that combines with the country's rank to form its full designation. By default, titles use whatever designation structure matches most closely to the way those countries were referred to popularly so i think that's basically just saying like historically what a country or uh, empire was called is what it's going to look like in game even if it had like a more i don't know technical name that it should have been called um it will be like the popular title is what it's going to be called uh, in game so however you can change the designation structure if you wish which is pretty good uh, if you prefer to call it another one while the default designation of china might be the chinese empire you can opt to change it to the empire of china instead if you'd like if a, a source of legitimacy is dynastic you might instead choose to use the ruling dynasty's name i.e. the Yan Empire. Definitely mispronounced that, <laughs> so I apologize. Uh, there are a bunch of other designation structures tied to culture, religion, or title type, which you'll get to explore in games. So yeah, it's pretty cool. You can have it as either, you know, the Chinese Empire or the Empire of China, you know, giving you that little bit of control. I know you can get that in some games. You can probably like manually change the title of a empire, but it's cool that by default, you can just like quickly, I guess, change which one you want to choose. Um, I always think Empire of China sounds better than Chinese Empire, but um, that's just me, I guess. Let me know in the comments down below which, which way you prefer. And then rank, starting with the basics. Rank is a concept you'll be familiar with from medieval history and other grand strategies. There are four title ranks of the game, county, duchy, kingdom, and empire. So they're not doing anything crazy. That's, you know, historically what those ranks were. We're going to see them again in this game. Every title starts the game with a particular rank, which informs us of its theoretical place in the medieval aristocratic ladder. Of course, the actual power of a country depends on a whole bunch of other factors and may be wildly disconnected from its rank. So uh, I always think this is most seen by players uh, rather than the AI. You could just have a duchy that's like crazy powerful, but the player just hasn't decided to become a kingdom or something. They're just maybe role playing as Duke and they don't want to become a king. And uh, they might have way more power than even like an empire or something just because they've maybe min, min maxed it or that specific area gets a big boost over the other one so uh, yeah you definitely do see that disconnect between ranks and actually how powerful they are yet even with the wide discrepancies promoting the rank of a country isn't always a straightforward affair if the country is the subject of another or its religious denomination has a powerful head of faith they might want to be bribed into approval lest they take concrete action in opposition yeah they're actually saying uh, if the country is the subject of another, oh, of another, oh, I see. I see. Like if it's uh, if you're a vassal of another country, you might not be able to promote yourself above. I guess that's, guess that's like if you're a vassal of an empire, you obviously can't become an empire yourself whilst you're a vassal. The other one is, I guess, like the Pope maybe can control what kind of rank you could be. We'll probably see about that in the future, but it sounds like uh, with them saying they're the religious denomination um, and it's head of faith, looks like maybe you can like buy becoming an empire maybe it says bribed into approval so maybe you can go to the pope and say look i'm the kingdom of france i think i should be an empire really think about it pope it might be one way of doing it you might have the like normal way and then like an alternate path to getting the kind of title becoming the emperor which is kind of how it worked historically for some of them if i'm thinking right like the obviously the hre was created by the pope i believe i might be wrong there someone will correct me if i'm wrong and uh, obviously uh, was it charlemagne that was crowned by the pope again i believe um i should have checked before i recorded this but uh like I say someone will correct me if i'm wrong there um the title ranks are the significant importance of the politics and diplomacy of countries with dynastic sources of legitimacy of course they also exist for countries with other sources of le legitimacy yet for them ranks carry less weight and work in a much more straightforward manner promotion or demotion largely depends on the state of the country itself so wide discrepancies are unlikely 
when compared to dynastic countries. So I guess let's talk about different um, kinds of countries. Countries with other sources of legitimacy. Interesting. I wonder if that's going to be like revolutions. If you have like a revolutionary country or not sure actually what it's, <laughs> what it's going to be talking about there. Uh, like I say, we'll see um, when when more dev diaries come out about it. A type. Every title has a type which tells us the reason for its existence and how it can be formed. There are three types of titles in 1356, which is when the game starts. A geographic, cultural, and religious. So this is a really interesting section of the dev diary. It's going to cover some really cool things about how titles work in specific areas. And there's going to be some cool titles uh, coming out of this. Geographic titles derive their meaning from a specific location. For example, the province of the Rhine in the west part of the HRE has an associated tile that might be created if a single country controls enough tiles in that province. To be clear, only the requisite number of tiles is only one requirement. A country's liege or head of faith will likely put in if they have the power to do so. So uh, yeah, it is saying here actually, yeah, the, the head of faith can block you from creating a title by the looks of it. I guess they just say like, no, the, the God doesn't see you as uh, the ruler of the Rhine, and uh, you're not you're not going to be allowed it. So, yeah, we'll be interested to see how that plays out. And it is cool here. So geographic titles. So it's saying here like the province of the Rhine. Yes, yeah, so you can form a title in that specific area. So can you have like kingdom of the Rhine, or is it just like duchy of the Rhine? It sounds like you could maybe get all the way up to like empire of the rhine it sounds like maybe you can do that you could have like kingdom of the rhine rather than having to use like a historical kingdom title in that area like germany uh lotharingia or something like that geographic titles exist for all provinces regions and continents by default their ranks are duchy kingdom and empire respectively though of course that could change during the course of the game the reason we've included geographic titles is to provide every country with at least one clear course for territorial expansion. Whether you actually want to expand territory is a different matter. You might just want to play tall or just role players like a small country or something, especially if you're playing in the HRE. In addition, smaller geographic tiles with a rank of county can be created from any city tile. These tiles do not exist by default, but are generated on demand under various situations and circumstances. For example, succession, repartition, or rising elite characters. No, yeah, it does sound like then. Geographic tiles exist for all provinces, regions, and continents. So, yeah, it does sound like every region will have a specific title. I guess it doesn't just mean like Spain, Portugal. It sounds like maybe like uh, maybe the Alps. You could have maybe could you have maybe Kingdom of the Alps or, or something like that because that's a geographical area of Europe. Or um, it might just mean France, England, Spain. Uh, Germany etc but uh, like I said we'll see obviously in future dev diaries but it does kind of sound like you can just make custom kingdoms almost based on areas of the map and I imagine it's harder than using the like historical du jour kingdoms that existed there but um, yeah it'd be interesting to see how if that is how that works because it would be pretty cool just seeing like different kingdoms come up that historically could have happened um, in those areas you could have had a kingdom of the Rhine kingdom of you know the pyrenees or something like that um just the mountainous kingdom up there kind of navarra-esque in uh, in the north of spain so cultural titles are defined by the people they represent these titles obviously tie in closely with the cultural mechanics of the game especially cultural divergence but in short we've given every culture an associated title which can be created by whichever country controls a certain percentage of the culture's population. Notably, these titles can be created by popular rebellions or revolutions, especially once the split in nationalism has spread among a large enough portion of the people. So again, this sounds like cultures can form their own um, titles and kingdoms. A lot of them are from rebellions or revolutions. So I think for an example of this, you'd have maybe, you know, the Kingdom of England, but then say, if it's early enough in the game, that's actually, do you know what, 1356 probably isn't early enough, is it? I was thinking of like the Anglo-Saxons could uh, have a revolution against somebody else who's ruling England, and then you might get like Kingdom of the Angle, <laughs> Kingdom of the Anglo-Saxons, or um, Empire of the, you know, a similar kind of thing like that. Like a certain section of that country splits out, forms a country based on their cultural title. Which is what it sounds like it works like. It's saying you can form titles based on the culture. So yeah, you'd have like, I guess, like say like Anglo-Saxon in England maybe could split out and form a kingdom of the Anglo Anglo-Saxons. A lot of these things we'll see obviously in future dev diaries exactly how it works. But it does sound from the wording there that that is maybe how the how the game could go. 
In addition to titles for individual cultures, we've also added titles for every culture branch, group, and supergroup. These titles require controlling increasingly large factions of the respective populations and are one of the ways of forming federations and confederations, which I don't think they've gone into a lot of detail on those two, actually. Um, I think they said in previous Dev Diary they'd talk about it in the future. So um, hopefully one of the upcoming ones talks about those two because, um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see like a confederation of different culture groups, I guess, maybe uh, holding out against a different one. It goes without saying that piling together members of different cultures, even if they are somewhat related, under a single hood isn't a cakewalk. Nationalistic separatism is a powerful threat that must be kept at bay. Our religious titles originate from denominations with specific doctrines or idiosyncrasies. All centralized denominations have their own titles for the head of faith. A classic example would be Catholicism with the papacy. It's important to note that the country having a religious source of legitimacy does not make it a religious title. So even if you make France into a theocracy, it'll still obey the usual rules for cultural titles rather than religious ones. So like it says here, you can make France into a theocracy, but you don't suddenly get religious. You know, you don't suddenly become like the Pope of France <laughs> and uh, and those kind of mechanics would come in. You'd act like a normal country. You'd just be a religious version of that country in, the, you know, how the actual tech works in the game. There are, however, other titles Beyond those of the head of faith, for example, while the Orthodox Christianity doesn't have a head of faith due to its semi-autonomous structure, it has the pentarchy idiosyncrasy that allows the creation of up to five religious titles upon the fulfillment of special conditions, modeled after the five historical sees of Rome, Constantinople, Alexandria, Antioch, and Jerusalem. We plan to adding these, uh, adding such unique titles for various religions across the world. So that's cool. They're, they're putting like a, all the different kind really of titles and types of countries and uh, realms in the game. Uh, the Pentarchy one is, is actually really cool, uh, having these. I think if you play Crusader Kings, you can get all five of them and then you can uh, fix the schism of Christianity and kind of put Catholicism and Orthodoxy back together if you own all five sides. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if they do a similar mechanic here because that is a cool way of playing. But uh, yeah, interesting to see they're even doing the kind of like semi-autonomous things like that. There is a fourth type of title that is not initially available to the game, ideological. These titles are few and far between, are difficult to create, and mechanics that significantly alter their gameplay. We won't be touching on them just yet. So again, there'll be a future dev diary. With it saying ideological, this is going to be revolutions of, of some kind, like the French Revolution, or um, I can't remember when the game actually goes up to time-wise off the top of my head. I don't think we get to like the Russian Revolution. I can't remember the end date of the game, but um, it sounds like being ideological, they're talking about the French Revolution or something like that. Again, as always, uh, leave a comment down below if you, if you think they're talking about something else, but uh, in my mind, they're, they're talking about the revolution. And then, uh, yeah, to be honest, guys, we're, we're at the end already <laughs> of this dev diary. And uh, yeah, they're just talking about the Kingdom of Naples. Players might try to conquer the rest of the Italian people in order to form the broader Kingdom of Italy or expand into foreign lands to the point where the Neapolitan Empire might be proclaimed. So yeah, you can, for, you can have the Kingdom of Naples and then obviously move north and maybe form Italy as your, king, as your uh, empire title. Or, like it says, you could go somewhere else, you know, expand into uh, North Africa or even Spain or um, the Byzantine lands. And then you, you create the Neapolitan Empire rather than the Ita Empire of Italy or something like that. So, again, kind of the different ways titles will work. And then another in-game screenshot. I'm not sure about this map. This this looks weird. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure about it. I guess it's just a maybe a debug screenshot or something because uh yeah the map looks odd <laughs> but uh it's obviously the south of italy it's the boot of italy yeah it'd be interesting to see like i was saying in the previous dev diary i kind of want to see like the map in game maybe even have like some kind of like a short time lapse just so we can see how the map actually looks because we haven't really had that much of a of a view of it there's some screenshots on the steam page and on their website but i don't know we haven't really seen how the map actually works so yeah it'd be interesting to see because this this map looks a bit, a bit weird to me but uh, yeah so here we go the kingdom of naples aristocratic monarchy kingdom tier cultural title you got uh johanna the first of anjou and then successor maria anjou um so it is male preferred prima gender but obviously she has no male sons because well no sons because uh Maria is uh, is a successor, so I guess she only has daughters at the moment. And then population, domain, army size, and got twenty two ships. And we've seen this back at a main view before in a in a previous dev diary. It looks like it's been changed a little bit, but uh, it's kind of the same. You know, admin power, which is I guess your efficiency of the realm, the power of the different elites. I I would imagine maybe this is probably aristocracy, and then maybe uh, merchants and the military. 
something like that, or religious. One of them's probably religious, actually. And then, you know, the breakdown of the age, social clash, culture, and religion. It's obviously Catholicism. And then maybe Protestantism, maybe here. They're in the south of Italy. Maybe it's a little bit of uh, one of the uh, Islamic faiths is somewhere within their land. Maybe they captured some land from them. Or oh, actually, it could be Orthodox um, as well, couldn't it? Yeah, it could be that. So, uh, yeah, and then the population, treasury, GDP of the nation. And then obviously the military again, because they've got this tooltip popped out. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for uh, that's going to be it for the dev diary today. Obviously, a bit about modability, how you can change titles and things like that. As I always say, I don't mod myself, but uh, the game is super open for modding. So uh, yeah, if that's your kind of thing, there's probably some cool information in there for you. The next dev diary is going to be on July second, and uh, yeah, again, they haven't told us what it's going to be about, so uh, we'll see at the time. So it's got the Discord, subreddit. Uh, they're very active in there, so if you're really interested in the game, if you join those, you'll get some information. And they're always clarifying questions people have about uh, content in the game as much as they can. But uh, yeah, that's going to be another Dev Diary. So um, leave a comment down below if you want to have a chat about what we've seen here, maybe what you're uh, excited for, what you maybe think could work a little bit differently, or just in general, if you're looking forward to Grey Eminence itself. I'm, I'm still super looking forward to it. Interesting to get a little bit more info on some things, but... Uh, we're only at the 11th dev diary, so we've got plenty of time. But uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video today, if you hit that like button, it helps uh, other people find the channel in the future, especially as Grey Eminence is kind of still a bit of an obscure title, really. I haven't seen it much places. So uh, yeah, if you hit that like button, it, other people might uh, find out about the game. And if it's your first video here and if you enjoyed it, if you subscribe to the channel, I cover Grand Strategy games on the channel, mostly Crusader Kings, uh, Grey Eminence itself, and then other uh, strategy games as well. So uh, I do Let's Plays and uh, live streams and all that kind of cool stuff. So uh, yeah, you know what to do if that's your kind of thing. But we're going to leave it there for today, and I'll see you in the next one.